I am going to try to survive 100 days in Ark Survival Ascended. The Unreal Engine 5 remaster of the game we all know and love, Ark Survival Evolved, sporting all new graphics that make the game absolutely beautiful, as well as some new features and bugs. Of course, I will have some challenges for this playthrough. First of all, I'm going to try my best to do this without dying. Secondly, I love to build, so I'm going to try to find some time and get some pretty cool builds done. And finally, we have to take down all three of the Ark's guardians, as well as the Overseer. Will we come out of this challenge victorious or will we lose everything we know and love? Let's find out. I awoke on a familiar yet very different looking arc and wow, the graphics are seriously stunning in this new version. This time I chose to spawn into South Zone 2 as it is one of the safest spots on the map. I took a moment for myself to just look around the environment and just take it all in just to see how different this looks from the old version of Ark. And then as I was admiring the new water, I heard a mate pair of Carbonimas shuffling their way through the bushes and onto the beach. I went to check them out to see what kind of improvements they've gotten, but it seems like most of the actual creature models haven't changed. Nearby was a Moss Chops, which would make the perfect early game tame if we have it at once. Unfortunately, its desired meal was cooked prime meat, so we're going to have to revisit you a little later, my friend. So I moved on to the old rock grabbing, tree punching part of any arc playthrough, which would allow me to craft my first stone tool. And as I turned around, I almost stepped on this little guy. Sorry buddy, I didn't see you there. This was a new feature they added with the new game. There are now wild babies roaming about that you can claim and then raise. Before long, I was arming myself with some primitive spears and using them to then kill that baby Moss Chops. However, I underestimated the strength of this Mama Moss Chops as she roared towards me, breaking both of my legs. Was I really about to die on day one to a Moss Chops? She came back around for another attack run, my legs broken, I couldn't run, I thrusted my spear forward at her face, and in a shocking turn of events, this startled her into a retreat. My bones magically healed, I scurried up a rock for safety from this beast of a creature. Once the Moss Chops settled, I made my way around the Bay of South Zone 2 where I would find another Moss Chops, this one a level 110. It unfortunately wanted a rare flower as its first meal, but I knew somewhere nearby where I could potentially find some. The rivers leading inland are often occupied by Castoroidus or giant beavers, and with beavers comes beaver dams, which sometimes have rare flowers in them. And lucky for me, there was one. I climbed upon a nearby rock to scout the area, and yes, there he was, the builder of this dam. I would have to be very quick stealing the flowers from within the dam, as the beaver would not be too happy about me breaking into it. While waiting for the beaver to distance himself, I made up some cloth armor, and then took one last look around our now hazy beach, to ensure the area was safe. Unfortunately, there were no rare flowers inside of the dam, but no time to sulk, that beaver may still be coming. I hurried off in disappointment, but don't worry, I would go back and dump that wood later on. The following morning, I spotted a mother parasaur and her baby, and I still needed prime meat to cook up for that first moss chops, so this baby would have to go. I fought off the mother parasaur until eventually her body dropped lifeless to the ground, and then took out the baby as well. Harvesting this baby gave me prime meat, which I could quickly cook up and use to tame our moss chops. Our moss chops would give us a nice little boost to berry gathering, but an amazing boost to fiber gathering. And with her help, I started laying out my first little starter hut. A real architectural masterpiece, if I do say so myself. Next up, I started making some more of our early game items. A few boxes for storing items, a bed to spawn at in case a moss chops kills us, a slingshot and bolas, which would be crucial for early game taming, and some mortar and pestles for making narcotics. We then went ahead and named our moss chops. Meet Saggy, everyone. <laughs> I headed out on Saggy to go check on that level 110 Moss Chops, and on the way made up a bow and some arrows. Upon arriving, I was thrilled to find that she had changed her mind about those flowers and now only wanted Tinto Berries. So I hooked her up with some of the highest quality berries I could find, and spent some time tending to her cravings. Another cool new thing with ASA is the ability to equip torches directly to your belt. Look at that. <laughs> what the? Why wouldn't they put it on your back? What a spot for that. Why not have it on your back instead of your front? Come on, guys. Think things through. With the torch now warming my loins, I went back for the last bead on our moss chops, and of course, she now wants giant bee honey. Looks like this one was not meant to be. So instead, I started gathering up a bunch of narco berries with Saggy, grabbed a quick explorer note, and then began making up narcotics to take advantage of that XP boost. This got me all the way to level 34, so first I swapped out my cloth armor for hide, and then began gathering materials to make a forge, which brings me to another new feature of ASA, the ability to track the materials you need for something that you're trying to craft. Soon enough I had it down, and then headed up a nearby hill to gather up just enough metal to get our smithy and first metal pick made up. And before the night ended, I found this level 110 Pteranodon, who I hit with a bola and began knocking out. 
but I forgot to put Saggy on passive and she decided to get a little frisky with it, which messed up the taming effectiveness. But I would not be losing out on this decent level PT, so I built a makeshift thatch pen around it to keep it trapped once it woke up. While waiting on that, I headed back up the hill to gather more metal, now armed with my metal pick, and then later in the day I returned to the PT to knock it out once more, this time mistake free. I was on my way out to look for some prime meat to feed our PT when I would stop by this green drop, completely unprepared for what I would find inside. Oh my gosh! What in the world? What is, what is this? The only baby I was able to find was a low level Triceratops. I thought Saggy might be up for this fight, but very quickly she was looking ragged. So I jumped off to assist with nothing but Trank arrows on me. Eventually the trike would pass out. We would take down the baby for some prime and get that PT tamed. Back at base, I would finish up making the upgrade to metal tier tools and weapons, and then spent the rest of the night killing anything I could find for hide I would need to craft the saddle. This would continue into day 5 until eventually I was able to craft the saddle and take to the skies to check out potential base locations. I already had two spots in mind, one of them was right here in south zone 2. I have always loved the look of this little pool within these rocks. The second one is this little bay all the way to the far northeast corner of the map. I've always thought it was an area that would make a great spot to build a little bayside village. But making the journey all the way up here would be difficult without cryopods and would have to be done soon without many tames to defend us in this less friendly area. While over here I stopped atop Giga Mountain for some crystal I would need to make a spyglass. And again, I gotta say, the view from up here is breathtaking. The lands in the distance, the clouds, it all just looks so good. If there's one thing they really got right with this remake, it is the graphical improvement. And once we return to base, it was time to name our Pteranodon. This is Loki. On day six, I went back to once again try feeding the moss chops, and this time she wants a rare mushroom. Luckily, I did manage to get one of those earlier out of a beaver dam, so I rushed back to my base to get it, but upon returning, she changed her mind and now wants a mezzoberry. Luckily, we can obviously get that pretty easily, but at this point, I'm just, I almost don't want to tame it. Like, she is just messing with me. And then, later in the day, I showed up for the final feeding, and she simply wanted a tinto berry. But while the moss chops were great early game tames, I still wanted something better for berries. So I settled on this level 90 triceratops using the good old can't hit what you can't reach method. I got it down and stuffed some berries in its butt. I decided I would settle permanently here in South Zone 2, so I began moving my few tames over. It was a long and challenging journey, but we made it without any losses to our ranks. With this area being essentially danger free, I began setting up just a little crafting pad that I would work from until I'm ready to build my first proper house. I then took a moment to name our second moss chops, Meet Athena. As I returned to moving all of the stuff from our hut over to our new crafting pad, little did I know I'd be making a new friend. Please leave me alone. Got me back to a corner, I'm, gonna, I'm scared. Stay in there. You stay in there. You're terrifying me. I was gonna tear this building down, but now I'm leaving it up just to keep you in there. And by the end of the night, we now had a nice little starting setup in what would be our permanent base. We'll call this the Crispy Lagoon. I returned to our Triceratops early into day seven to find it had finished taming, so I got a saddle made up for it and got to work on gathering up some more berries. With a good amount of narco berries gathered, I split up a bunch of raw meat so that it would spoil quickly and grabbed another explorer note so I could start crafting some more narcotics to get some more quick levels. After that, we came up with a name for our trike and this young man is Blueberry. The following day, I basically just repeated this process because right now my main goal was to reach level 62 so I could unlock the Argentavis saddle. While I was hanging around base, I took a little dive in our lagoon, and this little underwater section is just so beautiful to me. I really wish there were like multiple different kinds of exotic fish that I could catch and then release in here. Back to work, I made up a cooking pot that I will later use for making dye, and at the same time, I reached level 62, which meant the Argent Saddle was now mine. I was excited in the moment, little did I know though, the pain this one tame would soon cause me. Before heading out to Tame 1, I decided to go ahead and do some hide gathering and get the saddle crafted up, just in case something happens and we need to fly it home. I then got distracted by a nearby green drop and with some amazing luck, it had exactly what I was looking for, scissors! This meant I could now dye my hair to look like my proper self. I ended the night with a quick crystal run, which would allow me to craft a fabricator that I was convinced you needed for making flak armor. 
Shortly after, I would realize you only need the smithy, and I would get my first few pieces going. I got the full set completed the following morning, as this will be the first time I'm heading into some of the more dangerous areas of the map. To avoid any accidents happening, I wanted to make sure I was wearing some good protection. My next task would be to gather all the materials I would need to craft a simple gate trap. And then, with everything together, I headed out in search of an Argent. The first place I looked was an area known as the Mosh Pit, because all of these carnivores are here fighting. There were some Argents, but no good levels. So I spent basically the entire day searching between mountaintops until late at night, I spotted this level 110. Still not the greatest, but it was definitely the best I had seen, so I built up my trap really quick, and after a few attempts, I got the Argent to follow me into the trap, where it would be locked up and knocked out early into the next morning. While waiting, I decided to continue my search for Argents, and almost immediately found another 110. This one is a female, and I figured it wouldn't hurt to have a mate pair, so again, I trapped her and knocked her out. I continued my search again, and just down the hill, I found a level 130. Our luck was starting to get better. It took me much longer to bait this thing out of the woods than I even care to talk about, but eventually we had it knocked out, and then as I went to add it to the taming tracker, I noticed our female Argin was gone. I found a few scorpions as well as raptors patrolling the mountain trails, so my assumption is that something came along and found itself a nice free meal. So I went about gathering prime meat for the first Argin we knocked out, but upon arriving to tame it, found some more devastating news. This one had fallen through the mesh. Why did this always happen to me when taming Argins? I told you, this tame would cause me some pain. Then, to make matters worse, in my frustration over the Argin, I failed to realize I was slowly dying to the cold of the mountain. I rushed down the mountain in a panic, looking for somewhere warm enough to just stop and make some torches, but it seemed the whole island had fallen into an ice age. Finally, I found a beach that was at least warm enough where I could get a few torches made up and some meat on the fire. Once the island had warmed up, I went out to gather some more prime meat, and then thankfully, the level 130 Argent was still alive and able to be fed, and soon enough, it was tamed. As I was leaving on my brand new Argent, I spotted another high level one, so of course, I had to knock this one out as well. And as I was doing that, this crazy fog rolled in over the mountain. I literally could not see 10 feet in front of me. At any moment, something really bad could have shown up and just had me for lunch. But eventually, the Argent would go down and we would get the heck out of there. While I was waiting on the Argent to starve out, I began my search for my harvesting tames, starting with finding this level 125 beaver. However, grabbing it would not come easy. Ooh. Get away! No, 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 no! We're gonna die, we're gonna die. There's no way we survive this. Come on, 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 come on. Oh, this is so no way this is happening. No way, no way. Oh my gosh. Holy crap, dude was determined. He had the, oh my God. Dude was so determined. He was not gonna give up getting me. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. I just want to get one of these dang beavers. I would eventually scoop the beaver up and she would be tagging along with me to go tame our second Argent. Except that we wouldn't be taming it because this one also decided to fall through the mesh. I'm literally cursed by these things. They hate me more than my mother-in-law. So instead, I returned home with my new beaver, built up this little drop trap, and got her knocked out while she chewed away at the wooden doors. While she was knocked out, she somehow managed to build a dam. This is the kind of hard work I like to see joining the team. The following morning, I headed to the Redwoods Mountains to both look for a doid, but also to gather some more crystal. Unfortunately, not only did I not find a good doid, I also underestimated how quickly the beaver would wake up, which meant I would have to go back and knock it out again. I decided to stick closer to base this time, and instead went on a quick metal run. I love how the sparks now fly up when you hit metal. But upon returning to base, I was shocked to find the beaver was up again. You see that little taming tracker indicator that shows the torpor is apparently broken and wasn't updating. So while I was waiting on the beaver to heal up some, I set up a toilet, which is what I needed the crystal for. This would help us spoil meat much, much faster. Unfortunately, I was a little camera shy, but after a little bit of exercise to loosen things up, I finally felt the call of nature and rushed to the toilet to relieve myself. Flush it down and voila, quick and easy spoiled meat. And as the night was ending, we got the beaver down again for a third time in our now improved trap using some metal doors I found in a loot drop. 
As you can probably imagine, I was too afraid to leave my base, so I spent most of day 14 just doing maintenance stuff. We did, however, come up with a name for our Argentavis, and we're calling him Argento. I realized I hadn't yet made my tribe name, so we went with the old classic, Bag of Chips. And then, just up the river from my base, I would kill my first Alpha Raptor. I gotta say, they look even scarier in the new version, but seem to be a bit weaker. But what it lacked in strength, it made up for in really good loot. Did we get anything from him? An Ascended Crossbow! The loot is too good! The loot is too good! Holy crap! As I returned to base with my spoils of war, I found the beaver had finished taming, and with that done, I headed to the mountains in search of a Doid or Anki. And that is when this moment straight from a horror movie happened. There is something up here. There is something up here in the fog. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, it was a Karka. Oh my gosh. It just, <laughs> it just ran off the mountain. And it's a level 130. Holy crap. A 130 Karka just chilling up here in the fog, waiting to attack me as I came up here. My search continued into the next morning when I would find this level 70 Doid. Honestly, this is way lower than I would normally go for, but things are much harder to see now with the increased foliage and rocks. It took me the entire day to get home as I was just checking Doid spawns along the way, hoping for something better. But no, we would in fact be settling for a level 70. While that was taming, I took our new beaver out for a quick test run, and then we named her Snowball. With the Doid having better torpor, I was free to head out in search of my favorite dino, an Ankylosaurus. My first stop was at Herbivore Island, where I would find this level 100, who I decided was good enough to get the job we needed done. With our taming trap already occupied, I had to knock our newest friend out the old-fashioned way, and then it was back out, now in search of a Megaloceros. I returned the next morning empty-handed, but to find that our Doid had finished taming, used her to gather up some quick stone, and then got some more forges down so we can start mass smelting metal. Back on the hunt for a stag, I spotted this level 75 and decided to grab it as an insurance policy. But then, not 10 minutes later, I would spot this 135 that needed saving from a raptor so that it could instead fall victim to me. Then, it was time to give our doe it a name, and this is Coco. And before the night was over, our Anki was tamed as well. Of course, I had to immediately take him out to gather some metal as I was going to need plenty, but it ended up getting cut short when this alpha raptor showed up. I needed all the experience I could get though, so I quickly grabbed an XP note and headed back for the kill. I then killed anything I could find until we ran out of the juice on that experience note, before returning to base to find our stag was up and now on the winning team. And of course, we had to name the Yankee Heavy Metal. The rest of the day was then spent gathering materials with our new tames and beginning to build the first few pieces of our first build. This would continue into day 20 until I was interrupted by a random pteranodon landing in our base. She did her best to stay hidden from me behind our fabricator, but once she poked out, I was in shock. Man's just stuck on blueberry. There he is. 145! Oh no! Oh no! She must have known what I had planned as she departed the base before I could get a clean shot on her, but I would eventually track her down all the way out here on this rock in the ocean outside of my base and get her knocked out. I then went back to gathering more materials, and for his hard work, we named our stag Sir Thatchalot. Soon after that, we found our new PT had finished taming, and then it was back to more gathering. The crafting process would continue for the entirety of day 21, just a whole lot of standing around, waiting on things to craft. And early into day 22, I was finally ready to get started on my first build.
So that is our first build. And with ASA's photo mode, I'm able to actually come in here and give you guys some really good shots to really show this off. Now, this build is going to be a kind of all in one build on this playthrough. It's our workshop, our house, our storage, basically everything. This deck out here is going to be where we will store all of our dinos, all of our gathering tames, any extra tames that we have lying about, we'll keep out here on the deck. As we come inside the first floor, this big open area is where we'll have our industrial forge, and then we'll fill up this area over here with storage as well as our electrical generator. As we come up the stairs, we'll be able to access our forge here from the second floor, right there in that opening. And then this open room right here is going to be like my personal bedroom. We'll put our grill, our fridges, and that kind of stuff in here. I think this room in here will be our preserving bin room where we'll make all of our jerky we need for kibble. I was really just trying to get the outside look of the build, but we ended up with this room. So we'll make use of it and use it for jerky. Up here on the third floor, this is going to be our crafting center where we'll have all of our stuff like our fabricator, our grinder, our smithy, and we'll have access to it from out here. So yeah, I think it's a pretty cool little build, something unique and different. And since we're building in the lagoon, I wanted it to sit out over the water and kind of fit the theme of the area. So sort of like a pirate or maybe just like a harbor town sort of build. With the build complete, it was also time to name our new Pteranodon. Hello, Katie Pateri. So unfortunately, I forgot to hit record on day 24, but luckily I was also streaming at the time. So apologies for the lower quality and having to look at my face. But I started off the day heading out with heavy metal to do a metal run at some of the better metal spawns. As we passed over the redwoods, I saw a few wrecks stomping about, so we landed to have a look, and what I would find was game changing. It's alpha boosted. Dude, that's a 145 female Rex. I don't I'm not prepared to go for that right now. Like I have my Anki on me. This is such a terrible spot for this, dude. This is a terrible spot to find a high-level Rex. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to get this right now. I really don't. Like, I really don't want to work on this. I lost the Rex in the woods at one point, and it took a while, but eventually I got it to follow me out to the riverbed. And with the Rex now on the river, I did some quick gathering, and got it trapped in a trap that is designed by Captain Fat Dog. His channel will be linked in the description. Please go check him out. I began pelting her with trank arrows from the safety of this cliff, but she began to look pretty beat up. So I took out a nearby Megatherium, did my best Han Solo impression by climbing inside its corpse, and fed it to the Rex. All healed up, it was now safe to knock her out. With the Rex down and sleeping peacefully, I returned to my original plan of gathering metal and obsidian atop the volcano, where we would also spot a Giga just all up in the side of the volcano. Back at base, I began cooking up all of that metal. I may have mentioned this already, but I'm gonna need a lot of metal to make the industrial forge. And just before midnight, our first Rex was finished taming. Of course, at the time, cryopods still had not been added, so we would have to walk our Rex all the way home. Surprisingly, the dino pathing actually is pretty good now, and this wasn't too terrible of a trip. As far as the name goes, that will come at the end of this video. I like to use my community tab to ask for name suggestions from you all for my boss creatures. And obviously, with this being our first Rex, I had to get a saddle made up as soon as possible, and then spent the rest of the day just out testing her out. Now, at this point, I had enough metal smelting up that I would be able to craft the forge, but first, I had to reach level 80 to be able to unlock it. So I headed out on a little note run until I had plenty of experience built up, and then went to Carno Island, where I would take down anything and everything I could find, to include this low-level Alpha Rex. I kept at it into day 28 until I ran out of explorer notes on Carno Island, swooping underneath this Rex's roar to grab one off of Giga Mountain, and finally after killing another Alpha Raptor, I was level 80 and could unlock the forge. I was still short on oil and polymer for making the forge, so I figured the snow biome was the best place to get both. Without cryopods, I didn't want to risk bringing my Anki all this way out for oil, so we're doing this by hand. But for some reason, I could not find penguins to save my life. They were not on any of their normal spawn locations on the icebergs. After searching forever, I finally found a few hanging out around these ruins. I decided to move them down here on the ice so I could safely sort through them to pick out a male and female for taming. For some reason, I thought I would have enough time to set up an organic polymer farm. The only female I was able to find was a baby, so it looks like I was going to be taming a male and raising a baby. I took them over to a secluded spot on one of the icebergs, and luckily I still had a long neck and some trank darts on me, as my ascending crossbow would have definitely killed this penguin. Before long, the male penguin was tamed, and after giving the baby a little swack to get its attention, we imprinted on her as well. I was about to leave my penguin here. Where did he go? There he is. I almost took off without my penguin. I'm not even gonna lie. 
pick up your penguin before you go. Pick up your penguin, you should you should know. Don't ever leave it. You're gonna need it. Pick up your penguin before you go. Without cryopods, I needed some way to move large tames around the map faster, and my initial plan was to tame a quetz and build an airbus. I had all the tools I would need to get this job done solo, as well as some spikes to keep it safe. Now it was just time to go find one. While I was out searching, I spotted a unicorn who unfortunately fell victim to a pack of raptors. It would have been cool to have this thing as a tame, but these raptors apparently did not agree. Eventually, I did spot a level 20 and deployed my plan for knocking it out. I jumped off Argento in midair, deployed my chute, and attached myself to her with a grapple. From here, it was simple. I would whistle Argento to attack the Quetz, causing her to chase after it, and then once we got close, I would put her back on passive and let me go ahead and shoot it. This was going to be easy, right? It would, in fact, not be easy, as the Quetz would make a beeline for the Redwoods, leaving me dangling from Argento, ordering her to drag me all around the skies. I would continue tracking the quest through the redwoods late into the night. This was very risky with the possibility of Thylas waiting in any one of these trees. I literally felt like I was just a cat toy being dangled out for one of them to play with. But I finally landed the knockout shot on the quest and it dropped to the floor in the redwoods. Where I would quickly surround it with spikes. Yeah, this is exactly where I wanted to tame a quest. I was out gathering prime meat for the quest when I would make an amazing find. Another unicorn. We have literally spotted two unicorns in like two hours. I really need to buy a lottery ticket or something. But oh no, the unicorn had gotten stuck on a rock and was being taken down. I had to rescue it. So I disposed of the raptor, finished off the diplo, and then scooped it up to take it with us. I quickly dumped that meat onto the quets, and before long, she was tamed up and we were heading home. Back at base, I got the normal quets saddle crafted up and took her out for a test flight. And this bus driver could have only one name, Miss Frizzle. Then, with the baby penguin fully grown, it was time to name them as well. Meet Percy and Penny. I spent the rest of the day leveling the Quetz in hopes that maybe she would be worth having. But yeah, I really don't think I want to fly around at these speeds. Since I still had a pretty big XP boost, I decided to go ahead and kill some stuff to hopefully get some levels. And before long, I was level 82, which meant I could unlock the chemistry bench. This will help us mass produce things like narcotics and gunpowder. With the Quetz being a scratch, my new plan was to tame a Rhino Nanthia, uh, however you say it, which meant first I would need to kill a male for its pheromone. I'm just going to go ahead and put this in my origin. That's definitely not going to be a bad idea that comes back to haunt us later on in the video. I figured a Diplo or Bronto would probably be my best bet to act as a surrogate for my Rhino, and at the moment I thought it would be easier to raise a baby than to tame a high level adult. So I imprinted on this level 90 Diplo baby, who would one day be the carrier of our Rhino baby. That is until I found this Bronto baby, who despite being a lower level, still had much better stats. Go ahead and uh, do that, and then we're just going to go ahead and just send you on your way, bud. Have fun. Good luck. Good luck with life and all of its journeys and adventures. Yeah, I just realized editing this that I basically just made this Diplo an orphan, kidnapped it, and then orphaned it again all in like 10 minutes. I like to think it somehow survived and had a good life though. Then as I was leaving with our new Bronto baby, I noticed something hilarious. Side note, what's going on with my dude? My dude, I'm Mr. <laughs> I'm invisible. What's going on? I'm invisible. My man's is transparent. He's see-through. What the heck? I'm just a floating mohawk. Hold on. First things first, we have a more important mission. And that's to find out if we're butt naked. Hey, look, our unicorn's still there. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cursed. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> All right, let's get knacky. Oh, we're invisible. Oh no, we ruined it. No. No, man. Give me my invisibility back. Yes, it's back. No, the legs is what's making us invisible. We have invisibility pants. <laughs> Dude, it's straight up. Oh my gosh, I'm too tired for this. 
Unfortunately, my high school diploma level math failed me, and I miscounted how much metal I would need for the forge, as well as obsidian I would need for making polymer. So I did another quick trip to the volcano. While I was there, I would find this yellow drop with a ring that would require me to get pretty creative in order to access it. But sometimes the best rewards are the hardest to earn. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Pulled out the wrong thing too. Pulled out the wrong thing. Dude. Okay, I could probably reach it from here. Oh my gosh, it better be- Okay, that's some good stuff! Oh, that was so worth it! Oh my gosh, that was so worth it! Holy crap! Ascendant, Ascendant, and Mastercraft fur. Oh, baby, that was worth it. Back home, I started crafting up all the poly I could, and then while the metal was cooking, I started adding this little greenhouse onto the side of our build. With the greenhouse complete, I grabbed a low level Fiomia to do some fecal labor, knocked it out, and gave it some berries to start taming it up. I then did some quick gathering with blueberry till I found some carrot seeds. The main reason I wanted to get the greenhouse going was to grow carrots for our unicorn. I went ahead and placed an intake pipe down in the water and then a water tank behind the base. Because irrigation in ASA is somehow done over Wi-Fi. Yes, somehow our crop plot was being magically irrigated by a tank 10 feet below it. Don't get me wrong, I like not seeing the pipes, but this feels like something that should have been left as a mod. I needed just a little bit more paste in the forge we done, so I went out to gather some carrot in when I would see something simply disturbing. Oh my gosh! Baby got big really quick! It's a big- what the heck? Dude, what is wrong? Look at its eyeball! Bro, what in the world? That's so cursed! Holy crap! Giant baby turtle eyeball. What the heck? What the heck? And finally, towards the end of the day, we were crafting up our forge, and our workshop was coming along. The following day, I named our little poop machine Chris P. Bacon. I then crafted up my first vault and began moving everything over from our crafting pad. Later in the night, I spotted a pack of aloes just across the river from my base, and in this pack was a level 150 female and a 140 male. Talk about hitting the jackpot. I first attempted to lure the female into a gate trap, but she's been taking rock climbing classes and easily escaped. They were not impressed by this attempt and began destroying my thatch hut. I just wonder if that compu was still inside. Eventually I would get one stuck on a cliffside where I could shoot it and after a short chase it just kind of stood here and let me knock it out. It was then back to the cliffside to knock out the second one. This time we got to play a little game of whack an aloe. Peekaboo! <laughs> I love this! Oh my gosh, too slow. Peekaboo! <laughs> Dude, this is the best. This is the best thing ever. <laughs> it's literally whack-a-mole. It's literally, we're literally playing whack-a-mole with an aloe head. Oh my gosh, I can't even focus. This is hilarious. I'm about to start crying. And before long, our second aloe was knocked out. Our baby Bronto was taking much longer to raise than I really anticipated, and at this point I realized it would in fact be faster to just tame one. Luckily, I found a level 140 just up the river, and so I began baiting it back closer to my base. Of course, as it began to torpor run, it did the one thing I didn't want to have happen. Eventually though, it was down with one extra shot, but this is only meant to be a sacrifice, so I'm not too pressed about that. I went ahead and took out a baby stego for some prime, fed our first aloe, and luckily our second one didn't take any damage from that Bronto stampede. I went ahead and fed the Bronto as well, and before the end of the night, our two aloes had finished taming, and I completely forgot that this one also had a baby following it, so I imprinted on that as well. Then, not even two minutes later, I decided raising this baby wasn't worth the trouble, and uh, yeah. Besides, mom and dad were already making another, much stronger baby to replace it. With the Bronto still taming, I decided to head out in search of a high-level mate for our Rex. A nice frame tear would send me into the water before arriving on Carno Island to find there were now two Alpha Rex. I had to take at least one of these down or else taming anything would be a huge risk. As I was engaged in the battle, a red drop descended onto the island, and what it would hold honestly kind of pissed me off. What is wrong with these drops? I just got an industrial forge and a grinder from a red drop. What in the world? This is too far. You've gone too far, making it too OP. Like, pull it back a little bit. You shouldn't be able to get an industrial grinder and a, an industrial forge, or a grinder and an industrial forge out of a red drop. 
That is really good loot. That's amazing loot. It's frustratingly amazing because I just spent the last like three or four nights of the stream, at least two nights of the stream, like doing grinding to get to a uh, an industrial forge. I then spent the rest of the day just killing everything off of Carno Island in hopes of getting a good Rex to spawn. That would end up never happening, but I did find an Ascendant Bronto Saddle from a blue drop. On the way home though, I would spot a 110 Rex. I had seen this earlier and thought it was too low of a level, but at this point, I need to get some Rex breeding, so I'm going to settle for it. However, this Rex was very stubborn when it came time to get it in the trap. Please, for the love of God, bite me, you coward. Dude, oh my gosh! I am literally attacking you! I am attacking you! This is the dumbest Rex I've ever seen. I've never seen a Rex do this. Like, it's, it's, it is just so stupid. It has to, I have to clear the arc. The entire arc has to be clear of all wild creatures for this Rex to follow me. Bro, bro, screw the Parasaur. Come with me, come get it, come on. Come on, there is nothing on the beach anymore. We have cleared the beach of all obstacles for you. Can you please follow me to this trap? Where are you going? And then the moment I knock it out, this happens. Bro, what? Get off of him! Get off of him, please! Why do they do this? I swear, Brontos are drawn to knocked out tames. Bro, get off! You're standing on him! Get off! There's Raptor, there's Raptor, there's Raptor, there's Raptor. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. So after checking its stats, I decided that this Rex was just not worth waiting for it to wake up to then knock it out again. Needless to say though, I needed to take out some frustration. You know what, no, no, you know what, no. I don't even care, I'm doing this part. I'm afraid of you, I think I'm afraid of you, punk. You think I'm afraid of you? You think I'm afraid of you? Yeah, that's what I freaking thought. Later that night, I would get extremely lucky to find a replacement Rex, this one being a level 130. However, it is another female, so we can't breed it. It is also very stubborn. Using a baby Diplo as bait, I did finally get it trapped and then knocked out. Then on the way back to base, I found the Bronto had finished taming, and we named it Surrogate. Back at base, I placed on the industrial grinder I got out of that red drop, and then named our two aloes, Bonnie and Clyde. I now had more than enough carrots to tame the unicorn, so I snuck up on it, inserted one coin to ride, and then, look, I swear, I was hitting the prompt, okay? It just didn't work. I don't know what happened. And after kicking me, my whole crew wanted a piece of it. They wanted it dead. I was able to save the unicorn before heading out to tame our new Rex, where I would also spot a level 150 Ovis, just chillin'. This might be an even rarer find than seeing two unicorns. I'm in no position to tame it, however, but why not take it back to base, right? With our Bronto now tamed, I headed out on day 40 in search of a Rhino to put a baby in it. This would go on for what felt like hours. I spotted one, nope, it's a male. And then the Rhino search came to a screeching halt. That's a Rex. 145 male rats! Oh, baby! Screw the bug, we're getting this first. Holy crap! Yes, 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 yes! We need this so bad. I couldn't for the life of me get it trapped, so instead I quickly grabbed some gates and crafted up a bear trap. Of course, this rex was too smart to fall for my simple little trap. Okay, well maybe it's not that smart, so I calmly placed our remaining gate behind him as he just kind of stood there. And voila, our rex is trapped. All right, one more should really get him right there. That's 44. Oh gosh, he's alpha boosted. Wait, how's he alpha boosted? It's all the way over there. Hello there. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You tried, buddy. You tried, but I was smart. I was smart, and I noticed it on the Rex, and now you're dead. Oh my gosh, that was almost such a, such a disaster. Oh, he's getting in on me. He's getting it. Oh, thank gosh. That was almost so bad. There it goes. All right. Sweet. <laughs> I spent most of day 41 again out looking for Rhino before returning to base to find our baby Bronto was all grown up. I guess I could have just waited. It was then time to feed our new Rex, but this Alpha Rex had slowly made its way down the hill and I was very concerned it might attack my Rex after it tamed out. So I began attacking the Rex in hopes to at least lure it away, but it did the exact opposite. 
Luckily, I would get it out of there with no harm to our new Rex, and before long, he was tamed up. I love how the taming meter is just completely broken. The following day, of course, started with a little T-Rex threesome, but before long, we had our first few eggs. Our search for a rhino continued for most of the morning until I spotted this dreadfully low-level female, and she died fighting a racer. I would eventually spot something causing quite the ruckus in some trees, and to my delight, it was a level 75 female. I lost her momentarily, and then holy crap, there she was. This girl was all horned up and looking to lay her eggs, and we were her number one choice. Argenta would be the absolute MVP of this day, taking a brutal beating that allowed us to lure the rhino all the way back to around our base area, where after some time, I would eventually get her trapped into another Captain Fat Dog trap. I would begin pecking away at the rhino's health with my crossbow, and once we had it fairly low, I figured now was a good time to head back to base, grab our Bronto and the pheromone. But where was the pheromone? Did I put it in here? Maybe in Blueberry? Where was it? Let's rewind the tape back to day 33. So you remember when we got that rhino pheromone and I decided to throw it in my Arjun as I, you know, figured that would keep it preserved a little bit longer? Yeah, this is a clip of me dumping my Arjun's inventory after grabbing some hide and meat out of it and completely forgetting about the pheromone. So it was back out to find a male rhino and before long, I would stumble across this level 120. Would I be able to kill one this strong? Let's find out. Things were not going well. Argento was losing the fight and I would be forced to retreat. I then decided I would try trapping it for an easy kill, so I began gathering resources, but before I could even get the trap down, the rhino had hunted me down. This time he was not giving up as he chased me all across the swamp. He had us on the brink of death. I thought for sure this was going to be the end of me and my beloved Argento, and then he just stopped. So after quickly building the trap and healing Argento, I was able to get him trapped, took him down with the help of a wild racer, and grabbed his pheromone. Back at base, it was time for Serga to live up to the name. So we fed it the pheromone, did a little more damage before releasing the rhino, and after a little bit of hesitation, we were now pregnant. There it is. Yes! We're pregnant! We're pregnant! Congrats, everybody! We got pregnant today! I'm a father! I'm a dad! Wow! Child support! The following day, our now very bloody Bronto dropped to the ground, and in a rather graphic showing, out came our baby Rhino. This is the miracle of childbirth, kids. Now, unfortunately, the very first thing our Bronto was craving was a golden Hesperonis egg, so yeah, this uh, Rhino is only level 26. Because we had a baby to care for, I spent the rest of the day just upgrading my base, starting with the generator, which in ASA means we no longer need gasoline to power anything but this generator. Then it was time for an industrial grill and a refrigerator to set up a little kitchen. And finally, later at night, I got another vault down as well. Day 45 started with me once again trying to tame the unicorn, and again, for some reason, it wasn't working when I hit the prompt. I don't know, maybe I was doing something wrong. At this point, the taming effectiveness was shot, but honestly, this was just a trophy tame. So I hopped back on, and eventually, we got her tamed. I was also running short on pearls for making electronics, so I headed out to gather more. My first plan was just to kill trilobites, but they were proving hard to find. And then there was this guy, who died just in the right spot to where I couldn't harvest him standing up, but I also couldn't crouch because of the water. Luckily, my pike was just long enough to get the job done. But that method would take forever, so instead I headed to the freezing waters of the snow biome to find more. I will say, they have really made pearls much harder to see, and I'm not a fan of that. This would continue into day 46 as I would do a little parkour over the ice with the sounds of hungry sharks stirring below me. Before heading back to base, I decided to stop at Carno Island in search of a saber tooth for caving. Eventually, I found this level 135, but the might of my crossbow, mixed with my stupidity, was too much and I killed it. On the way home, I would spot a level 125 toad, and since I was still short on pearls, I thought this might be a good option for making my way down to the underwater pearl caves. Night turned to morning as we began knocking out our toad while it attempted to tongue punch our- Before long, we had it tamed, popped a saddle on it, and took our little yellow friend for a test swim in the pond. Next, we need to name our unicorn, and this girl is Twilight Sparkle. As well as our Bronto, which of course we named Littlefoot. Back to work, I started crafting up some scuba gear and went off to find our first underwater cave full of pearls. I made it to the rough coordinates of one of the caves and began descending into the depths. Oh, it is so dark down here. Holy crap, we're gonna run into something bad, aren't we? Oh gosh. My heart's beating, this is terrifying. Oh, oh god! No, 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 not that! Not that! Not that! That's not what I want to see! Last thing I wanted to see! Holy crap! 
Holy crap! Oh my god! Dude, this is a bad plan. This is a bad plan. Who who told me to come in the water with the frog? Who said this? Was it me? It was me? I need a break. I need a breather. Okay, 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 okay. Bad, bad stuff's happening. Bad stuff's happening. Come on, frog. Move, frog, move. All right, you know what? This is a bad idea. <laughs> Let's go home. So with the Tuso defending that other cave, I headed to a second one. There were plenty of pearls in here. We just had to clear out all of the fiber before we could actually pick them up. On the plus side, we now have a ton of fiber too. I started making some electronics, but I still needed a lot more, which meant going for some more pearl caves. The first cave also had oil rocks in it, so of course I farmed those up as well. I made a quick stop at base to drop stuff off and named our toad Mustard. I headed back out and the second cave I went for was being guarded by some eels that I would have to first lure away and take out. Then as I was diving back down to the cave, this happened. Hello, Chips. He's not answering me. Am I just sitting in the chat? Why am I in here? Did you pull, each other. <laughs> did you pull like, me in here? Why is Jim sitting in chat? That was the scariest shit. I'm literally, I am literally like diving down to a pearl cave on a <laughs> frog right now. What's he doing in there? I don't know. I, I didn't know, know I was in I here. I don't know what he was doing in here. I didn't even know he was in here. <laughs> just diving down like into the depths of the ocean on a frog to go down to a pearl cave. And, and I just then he hear, hears his voice going, hello, hello chips. chips. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... Huh? <laughs> chips probably. Do you want us in here, Chips, or are we? <laughs> I I didn't want to be in here. <laughs> uh, no, I don't care. You, you have permission to leave now, Chips. <laughs> Well, that was interesting, but back to gathering pearls. So we now had the electronics, but still needed to craft some polymer. So while I was waiting on that, I went out looking for Thames, but instead found this Bronto egg. I'll be needing this later. And finally, we had everything we needed to make our chemistry bench which I would use to immediately begin making spark powder and then gunpowder. Halfway through our playthrough and well, this video was taking me so long to make that we're at the point where Wildcard decided to add cryos. So of course I unlocked them, headed to the green obelisk and crafted up a handful of them. I spent most of the day looking for a Rex but eventually would settle for an oviraptor to tame instead. Now anytime our Rex breed, the oviraptor will grab the egg and hold on to them for us. Unfortunately, I underestimated the power of my crossbow and well, yeah. <laughs> It just dropped like a rock. <laughs> oh my gosh. I gotta remember this crossbow is like completely OP. All right, well, we're gonna take this out of here. Um, we're just gonna drag this. Uh, we'll throw it back here, I guess. We're just, yeah, nobody. Hey, everybody down there, close your eyes. Oh, it didn't fall. All right, we're gonna try again. We're just gonna toss this. There we go. We'll just, yeah. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Nobody knows it happened. I would find another oviraptor later in the night, and this time, we managed to actually knock it out and gave it the Bronto eggs we've collected. Before long, our oviraptor was finished taming, and then I went about building a little breeding stand for our rex. I went through a few renditions, but eventually we settled for basically just putting our male rex on top of a box with the oviraptor inside, and then our females will back their booties up around the base of the box. I figured this would be a good time to find more wrecks for breeding, and luck would have it, just up the river was a level 120 female. It's not the best level, but again, I'm pretty desperate. This time I just tried luring her into an old fashioned gate trap, and it actually worked really well. I started loading her up with arrows, and before long, she was down, in a very uncomfortable way. So I spent the day out searching for more wrecks when I would spot another red drop on Carno Island, and again, this one had an industrial forge in it. Grinding these down is basically my main source of metal. An entire day on Carno Island and not one good wreck spawned. Really, I should just stay close to my base. That's where all of the good ones have been spawning. Then, as my luck would go, the next morning I found a level 125 female who was in a fight with a flock of Argentavis. I tried drawing them off of her, but she ultimately fell to their talons. Later in the day, I would end up finding a 135 Saber, who I lured across the river to this small secluded island, tied her up by her feet, and got her down without killing her. I hung around the island until it was time to feed our Sabertooth, but unfortunately, like my three-year-old, she just didn't want to finish the last bite on her plate. So we had to give her a little more time before coming back to find her tamed and cryoing her up. 
and we returned to our wrecks at the end of the night to find it was very close to waking up. But no worries, we got our tamed as well. I got home and went to throw out my new wrecks when I remembered that you now have to have a cryo fridge nearby to use cryopods. That is an interesting change. So after getting some mats together, I headed for a nearby blue drop and crafted one up. I placed that down inside my house, went to go throw out my wrecks again, and what the heck. Oh yeah, you have to wait five minutes. Such an interesting change. After waiting patiently, I was finally able to get my new Rex out and added to the orgy. Of course, we got the Saber out as well and hooked her up with an Ascended Saddle we found in a green drop on like, I think, day four. And we had to name her. I had to go with T'Challa. Look, she's transitioning, okay? Next was the Oviraptor, Blue Chew. Now that we have a Sabertooth, I headed into our first cave. This is the Lower South Cave. It holds the Artifact of the Hunter and is located roughly right here on your map. This is one of the easier caves on the island and would mostly serve as a test to see if T'Challa was up for the task of caving. They handled themselves pretty well with the swarms of bugs, but my main concern would be dealing with the armor-breaking Arthopleurus. We continued fighting our way through the cave one swarm at a time until I would eventually come to this choke point. The artifact was just through here, but since T'Challa can't fit, I had to clear the way with my handy dandy shotgun. All right, brothers, here we go. There she is. Look at that. That's a beaut if I ever say, oh, what the heck? Look at, that. Look at that bug's just sitting here. I heard it slithering around. It's just sitting over here. All right, let's make sure there ain't nothing else over this way first, brothers. Yep, that looks pretty clear. Let's look over here. Anything hiding back here? Nope. All right. Let's go ahead and grab this little butte. There we go, our first artifact. Well, I say, I think we've done pretty well. After leaving the cave, I still had a pretty long XP boost from grabbing Explorer Nodes, so I figured it would be a good time to try leveling T'Challa some. Lucky for us, there was an Alpha Carno just up the river, and after an almost 10 minute battle, we were able to take it down. With one cave done, I was ready to start preparing for another build, but first wanted to get a few more vaults down to better separate my materials. Now the boring part, flying at the speed of a snail while Coco swings away at every rock in sight. But by the end of the night, I had started crafting my first few building pieces. Day 57 would be spent doing more of the same, with a quick trip for wood thrown in as well. Then we were out of thatch, so we went about gathering some of that, and before long we had everything ready for our next build. Now because I'm building on some rather uneven land, it did take me some time to just work out the foundation. But by the following morning, we had it sorted and ready to start building.
All right, so that is the second build of our playthrough, and this one is going to be our egg hatchery. A little more simple design than our first build, but it'll get the job done pretty well for hatching eggs. I was going for a sort of like port town theme for this playthrough, so this would be sort of like a garrison tower that you might see in one of those towns. How we're going to use this is we will come right in here to this open platform, and this will be where we will hatch all of our eggs. We'll put some air conditioners down underneath, throw a trough up here in the middle, and then when we're ready to move our babies out, we can take them out of either of these entrances. We could airlift them out the top with our quets, or we could drive a raft right up here into the water and just drop them off the cliff, and then take them out into the open space we have outside to raise them up. So now that the build was done, I need to go ahead and get it ready for actually hatching eggs. I crafted up some air cons and placed everything down underneath the floor of the build, as well as a feeding trough on the inside. The preparations for egg hatching began with taking Bonnie and Clyde out for a meat run, just wiping out the entire population of South Zone 2. Before long, I returned to base and started throwing out my eggs, and while waiting for them, I added another fridge to store all of my extra meat. I also used this time to craft up what few antidotes I could before returning to pick up my one aloe egg. That way I can hatch it alongside the Rex when they are ready. But we still had some time so I, I grabbed an explorer note with T'Challa and headed back into the lower south cave to level them some. By the end of the night our eggs were finally hatching. I really needed some females for breeding, but of course I would only get one female out of all of these eggs. Once they were loaded up with meat I grabbed any large dino poop I could find and headed back into the cave this time with the mission of taming some dung beetles. Before long, I had tamed up the appropriate number of beetles for any garden, and after the day of tending to the babies, we named them appropriately as well. Before relocating them into their new home, and like the oviraptor and eggs, now in ASA, dung beetles will automatically pick up any nearby poop. The following morning, I decided to head out on mustard in search of something we could use for the underwater caves. The new water physics make it almost impossible to see though, and we almost ran right into an alpha meg. Eventually I found a whole shiver of sharks, and one of these fine specimens is a level 120 female. After dealing with all of the simps following her around, we knocked her out while she just kind of stared at this rock. I continued my search the rest of the day until out of the fog of the depths, this level 150 female found me. She wanted to join the team, so being the gentleman I am, I had to grant her wish. After stopping at base to imprint the babies, I took out this alpha raptor which would give me all of the prime I needed for taming the megs. But there's just one problem. They're gone. I even returned to where I had knocked them out and used a command to basically make the ocean visible. I really did not want to use this command at all because honestly it just looks visually bad, but considering the fact I had a timer set so I know they did not wake up and nothing should have come along and attacked them, I wasn't about to search through the fog again. Unfortunately, it seems they literally just glitched off the face of the arc. So my OBS screwed up and randomly stopped recording on day 55, but here's what happened. I found a level 135 meg and knocked it out, found a level 130 and knocked it out as well, and then fed the 135, which now on the morning of day 66 has just finished taming. So I quickly dove into the water with mustard, whistled the meg to follow me to safety, and got it cryoed up. The second meg was ready and this time I had a plan to do a little tactical drop. Hovering above the meg, I dropped mustard into the ocean before diving down myself, quickly mounted up, and swooped in to feed our shark. And before long, we had her tamed up as well. Then we just had to go retrieve Argento, who I'm sure his wings were getting real tired. Back home, we named them Megan Fox and Meg Griffin. The rest of the day was spent mostly doing stuff around the base to include gathering and planting our other crops and making up some more narcotics. The following morning I headed into our second cave, this one being the central cave which holds the artifact of the clever and is located roughly right here on your map. This cave was filled with rabies infested bats, but luckily I remembered to bring those antidotes that I had crafted up. This one was generally uninterested in fighting. Overall the start of this cave was fairly easy as we pushed through. We did run into one sleepy boy, but he was easy enough to deal with. We fought all the way down to the artifact room and man, T'Challa was feeling it at this point. So I quickly grabbed it and wasted no time getting out of there. Except that we couldn't fit and had to turn around. We eventually made it back to base, T'Challa still bloody with the scars of war, but with a second artifact to show for it. And later in the day, our baby aloe was now all grown up. Day 68 started with a volcano run for obsidian, but it was so hot I had to go shirtless. Look away ladies, I don't want to tempt you. On my way home I would stop to grab this yellow ring drop that was being guarded by an alpha raptor. Heavy Metal and I began taking it down when a pesky little otter decided to join the fight and was swiftly dealt with. 
The drop had some more Ascended Fur gear in it though, so that was well worth it. I then spent some time doing a stone run so I could make paste out of all of the chitin we've gathered from caves, and then used the obsidian with it to start making more polymer. The polymer is for making up this industrial cooker, which I promptly placed down. Now I'll be able to make up all sorts of recipes much faster. I then went ahead and fixed up my scuba gear for my next task. Unfortunately though, our sharks can't fit out of this little waterway, which meant I had to go to an obelisk to make another fridge. That way I can set one up by the water for moving them. And on the way back to base, I found another yellow ring drop, this one with some ascendant flak armor in it. Early the next day, I started setting up our little Oceanside gate base. I normally hate these bases built out of gates, but we need somewhere to finish raising our now very grown Rex babies. This would also serve as a spot where I could uncry on my water tames, so with all of my wrecks moved over, I did exactly that and we headed out for our next adventure. Now like I said before, I normally would not use the setting to defog the ocean, but yeah, trying to find lobsters on the bottom of the ocean floor with seaweed everywhere is literally impossible with it on. Even with it off, it took me forever to find these fellas. And of course, everything and its mother showed up to fight me as I was harvesting them. After dealing with all of them, I returned to find that a level 105 Mosasaurus had now spawned in. Looks like two black pearls will have to do for now. But then I got to thinking, what if I could manage to knock this Big Bertha out? Not gonna happen. But while I was heading back to imprint on the Rex, I would spot a level 145 and 135 Megalodon just hanging out together. It's crazy how easy it is to spot them when you forget to turn the fog back on. So after the imprints, I began working both of them down. The 145 would take a nap first, and before long, the 135 would be joining him. In the time I was doing that, the Moza had now despawned, and I was able to find a few more lobster boys for pearl farming. And by nightfall, one of our megs was ready to start feeding. Shortly into day 72, I made my way over to feed the other one as well. We waited around for this one to finish taming up, and then headed over to retrieve the other one. We now have four high-level sharks that hopefully we can use to clear some water caves. We named our two new ones Mega Chad and Mega Shelong. What is a Shelong? What the hell is a Shelong? With the black pearls I gathered, I was able to make up a batch of absorbent substrate, which I would need for making a few gas masks. I also tested out my new cooker making some med brews, but not before accidentally making a bunch of red dyes. Soon after that, all of our wrecks had finished raising, and I began relocating them over to our original base area. One of the males actually has better stats than his dad, so he is now the lucky ladies' man. With no wrecks left to imprint, I decided to head out for another cave. This time I set up a little cryo fridge box so I can keep Argento cryoed up and safe until we return. As you can probably guess from me making the gas masks, this next cave is the Swamp Cave. It holds the artifact of the immune and is located roughly right here on your map. This cave is filled with toxic gases that without a gas mask would kill us very quickly. I began pushing my way into the cave, but it was already not looking good for old Mustard. The swarms of bugs began to overwhelm our poor frog. Things were looking so bad, I was forced to retreat atop a plant and just try to tongue down the few remaining spiders. Eventually, I had to accept that Mustard just didn't have it in her, and we would have to come back with something a little stronger later on. So that night, I got to making up some focal chili, which I would use to make some exceptional kibble. That kibble, of course, was for a Megatherium. Now, they only actually need superior kibble, but I had plenty of Rex eggs laying around, and exceptional kibble will work, too. Eventually, I found a level 125, who I baited off the cliff into my trap I had waiting, where I would knock him out. Then, not five minutes later, I spotted this 145 female. It's a little late in the game to be doing breeding, but I can never turn down a good mate pair. But she was a little more stubborn when it came to following me down the cliff, Okay, she was a lot more stubborn. She also had no desire to get in my trap, but eventually I managed to box her into this corner of the ice where I would knock her out. So since we had to wait on those two to starve out and we are already in the area, I figured now would be a good time for another cave. This is the Northwest Cave which holds the artifact of the Skylord and is located roughly right here on your map. This is also known as the Crouch Cave because, well, for a lot of the cave you have to crouch, meaning tames are really a no-go in here. Now I did apply some bug spray so everything would just ignore me, but honestly, where is the fun in that, right? So I began fighting my way through the cave, watching to not fall into any of the death drops. It is a pretty short cave, and before long I was approaching the room with the artifact. Unfortunately, it was covered in bats. But no worries, they're nothing we can't handle, and before long, it was time to grab the artifact. Now on ASE, you could just grab this from the cliff, but honestly, it looked a bit further away. I was really worried I couldn't reach it, and didn't bring grapples to get back up. But thankfully, after a bit of maneuvering, it was in my grasp. 
After leaving the cave, I noticed both my Megatheriums were no longer being tracked. So I returned to the scene to find that, yep, the first one was no longer here. Scene of the second one? Yep, gone as well. I don't know if something came along and killed them, or if rendering in the world when leaving the cave caused them to fall through the map, but based on our track record here in ASA, I'm gonna assume it was the second one. So I spent all of day 75 searching for a replacement, and just into day 76, I found a level 105. Obviously not what I hoped for, but it should be good enough to get the cave done. Then as luck would have it, I spotted two more nearby while I was waiting, and one of them was a 135. I tried doing just a quick two gate trap, but she quickly climbed out of it and then just kind of stared down at me as if to say, try that again, peasant, and I will smite you down. So naturally I kept trying using more gates until eventually she was trapped. By the way, this is so much easier than trying to lure them into a trap. And before long, we had her knocked out. I decided to go ahead and tame the low level one just to have as a backup, and then eventually we did get the 135 tamed as well. Of course, we had to name them, and we went with Brooke and Mrs. Chewbacca. All this time out away from base got me to level 90, which meant I could finally craft the Rhino saddle. For the Rhino, I put names that you all suggested on a spin wheel, and I kid you not, the winning name was Kevin. Of course, I also had to take it out for a little test run. Now, this one is a pretty low level, considering I was only getting it for moving tames, pre them adding the cryos. But now, with my new Mega Ethereums, it was time to once again take on the Swamp Cave. Of course, I immediately hit a choke point, but Miss Chewbacca was absolutely taking this, even if I couldn't see, while also gathering more stuff than I could even carry, and gaining a ton of levels. Because of the choke point though, I would have to go grab my cryo fridge to bring it on past the choke point. Only problem is, upon returning to the cave, I discovered that my Megatherium was gone. Now, I was going to include the in-game audio for this, but I don't want you all to think less of me for the things I said, so we're just going to stick to the narration. Let's just say I was very upset. Well, obviously that sucks, but luckily I brought our low level one as a backup. So after setting up the cryo fridge, I got it out to deal with the remaining bad guys. Even with using the low level Megatherium, clearing this cave was fairly easy. And this leech filled pond would provide us with more leech blood that we can use to make more antidotes. Honestly, the hardest part of this cave was having to constantly set up my fridge and wait five minutes to get past each choke point. But eventually, I found my way into this room of snakes and spiders who were guarding a red drop. Once clearing them out, the red drop had an ascendant doid and rhino saddle in it. Not bad. Before long, we were making our way up to this little tunnel and had our fourth artifact in our hands. Now in ASE, there was actually a hole up here that you could just kind of drop out of and it would take you to the start of the cave. You could even grapple up and skip the entire cave. Honestly, it was pretty stupid. So I'm kind of glad they actually patched it for ASA. Taking a break from caving, I headed back into the snow in search of my support creatures for the boss fights. Eventually, I spotted a level 125 UD, and with our Rhino, I can just pick this fella up and drop him right in a trap. After knocking out the UD, I decided to roll the dice and head all the way back to my base to make up some more kibble so that the following morning, I could begin my search for a Deodon. I ended up stopping back at the UD first, and luckily it was still here. So I went ahead and gave it the food to start taming, and he ended up finishing before I found any Deodons worth even mentioning. Apparently though, that is what it was waiting for because immediately after taming the UD, I finally found a high level Deodon just up the hill. Of course, it along with every other predator in the snow began chasing a deer through the woods, which made it really difficult to pick up. I lost it momentarily before finding it again, fighting a 145 UD. Of course, I find a higher level one just after I finished taming one, which I accidentally grabbed and after removing it from the scene, my Deodon was now nowhere to be found. I searched forever until I finally found him fighting an Argentavis. Nope, just another one that looks almost identical. Then, as I was just about to leave feeling defeated, I spotted something moving through the snow-covered rocks. It was our 135 Piggy. Thank goodness. So while holding him, I built a little trap from the back of Kevin and dropped him in before going to grab this yellow ring drop. Alright, what you got for me? Oh my gosh. Holy crap. Holy crap, that was an Ascendant Assault Rifle. I think there was an Ascendant, yeah, an Ascendant Compound Bow in there. I don't really use assault rifles, but I mean, it's still ascendant. Journeyman Karka Saddle, if this was a normal playthrough where I was going to go tame that Karka we saw earlier, I would definitely use that, but... But this right here, this ascending compound bow, holy crap. 
300% damage. That's gonna save us. With that excitement out of the way, it was back to knocking out the pig. And before long, it was time to pop over the food and get it tamed. Day 81, I had a ton of new Rex eggs and a few aloe eggs ready to hatch, which of course meant we need to spend most of the day doing another meat run. And by the end of the day, they were all hatching. At this point, it doesn't really matter how many females we get, but of course, we still got mostly males. I had some things to craft while I was waiting on those babies to get to the point where they can eat off the trough, so I first went on a stone run, turned it into a butt ton of spark powder, then came a bunch of gunpowder, and a few runs making paste. The gunpowder was of course for making advanced rifle bullets for our new rifle, and the paste was for making polymer, which I needed to make arrows for our new compound bow. I did all of this to first take our new weapons out on a test run. The rifle does decent enough damage, but man oh man, this bow is gonna be game changing. So I had to take heavy metal out that night for another big metal run so we can make up some more arrows. Obsidian and metal gathering continued for basically all of the next day until towards the end of the night we were crafting up another bundle of arrows. And now with those arrows it was time to take on another cave. This one is known as the Lava Cave, it holds the artifact of the massive and is located roughly right here on your map. Because this cave is extremely hot, I prepared a few soups, which will help keep me nice and cool. As with the other caves, we began making our way down, this time using our new bow to try lessening the load T'Challa would have to take on. Weirdly enough, shooting things in this cave has a visual bug like you're shooting underwater. The swarms of bats started getting on us quickly with large numbers and honestly, T'Challa was not looking too good. I managed to start thinning them out a few at a time, but man, this cave was already taking longer than I expected. Regardless of that, I forged on through the cave, taking out as much as I could with my bow to spare T'Challa of any unnecessary damage. I made it a decent amount into the cave when the warning timer for my baby imprints went off and I was forced to retreat for the time being. So after quickly taking care of them, I returned to the cave and to my pleasant surprise, none of the stuff we had taken out had spawned back in yet. The path of the artifact was not completely clear, but after a short while, it was in our sights. These scorpions were stupid enough to walk straight into the lava, and when they tried getting out, I pushed them right back in. Alright, here we go. Make the first jump. That was easy. Alright, make the second jump. I feel like those are shorter. Those used to be further apart, I swear. Alright, we got the artifact. We're just gonna grapple back. Here we go. Oh, that's a little short. That's a little short. Oh, we hit the rock that's hanging down. Luckily, we're professional grapplers now after Season 4 of Monarchy. We got this. Alright, that was easy enough. I don't know why I grabbed the artifact and ran as if like everything in the area was gonna get aggroed to me as soon as I touched it. With no time to waste the following morning, I began gearing up for another cave, and after another round of imprints, headed out with Mustard in Claw. Next up is the Upper South Cave, which holds the artifact of the pack, and is located roughly right here on your map. I brought Mustard along for the underwater portions, but quickly found that the bats were just too much. Honestly, Mustard, you're just an all-around disappointment. So I ended up deciding to do this cave the old-fashioned way, on foot. I fought my way through arthropleuras, scorpions, and bats until my chest and gloves finally had given out. But this would not stop me as I made my way to the water's edge where I would hear something large and hungry stirring beneath. I climbed up some roots to get a better view when I would be surprised by a croc who appeared to be stuck climbing a tree. Easy enough job getting rid of him, I guess. I began poking my head into the water where I would be met by a school of piranha. Luckily in ASA they no longer have levels and they're actually pretty easy to deal with. I soon came to this choke point in the cave where the croc was waiting to eat me. Sadly for him, he couldn't fit through and instead would become my victim. I of course would use this to my advantage for any other crocs I faced in this area. After fighting through another school of piranha and one last sarco who thankfully can't really hit me due to ASA's broken AI, we emerged at the end of this tunnel to a blue drop that unfortunately was pretty empty, and it was also at this moment I realized I had gone the wrong way. This meant that I would have to return later as I once again needed to get home for imprinting. So the next day after getting our gear repaired and imprints done, we came back and this time went the right way in the underwater section, leading us into a different piranha infested tunnel. Come on, little fishy. Come on. There we go. All right. Take care of those. Go around. Oh, my God. <laughs> a whole swarm. A whole damn school. That's what I caught some fish to call you. Yeah, school. A whole school of them <laughs> around the corner out of nowhere. Holy crap. Eventually, I grappled past the last few bad guys to an air pocket, and after dealing with the Sarko who followed me out of the water, I was jumped by not one, but three Arthropleuras. Honestly, I have no idea how none of them broke my armor. 
back into another water section with a Sarko that can't fit through the tunnel, and before long we had arrived at our fifth artifact. But there were some bats guarding it, so I strategically poked them from under the water before retrieving the artifact. The following day our new aloes had finished raising, so I moved them all out, and then quickly headed out on Katy Pateri towards our next cave. The next one we would be doing was our first underwater cave, which meant I would have to set up an annoying little fridge outpost to get all of my megalodons out. I began swimming out to the cave cords when I had to just take a moment and just soak in the beauty of this game. Honestly, the sun setting over the ocean is just stunning. But enough of that, we've got business to attend to. I began descending into the depths when I noticed two of my sharks were not following me. For some reason, they were stuck on the surface trying to follow each other even though they're still following me and then just as i turned back down a whole gang of baddies was approaching and i would have to fight them off with just myself and the one other shark who was actually listening this is the easier of the two underwater caves the caverns of lost faith it contains the artifact of the brute and is located roughly right here on your map like i said this is the easier of the underwater caves mostly consisting of eels and megalodons there is a chance for an alpha but even then i think our team could handle that the main thing would be making sure no jellyfish sneak up on me as they have the ability to dismount riders it wouldn't take long or really any challenge for us to reach the artifact so with a lot of time to spare i decided to check some of the land portions of the cave for any drops there was a red drop in here but it didn't really have anything i would need i then spent the rest of the day just leveling my already grown rex. The following day I decided to cry up all of my rex as I came up with a plan for leveling them. My plan would be to take them all to Carno Island. With its heavy dosage of carnivores to include rex and alphas, I felt like this was the best place for leveling. But first, I wanted to make my way over to the cave that sits here on Carno Island. I struggled finding the hole at first as I was being chased around by a saber tooth while still trying to avoid the alpha rex who had made these lands his kingdom. Eventually, I found the entrance with the saber tooth still hot on my trail, turned around, and let a perfectly placed arrow fly right between its eyes. So, okay, this cave is the Northeast Cave. It holds the artifact of the Devourer and is located roughly right here on your map. This cave is a spiral straight down filled with our typical nasties, but nothing our compound bow couldn't deal with. As long as we carefully aggro a few things at a time, we should be fine. Oh shoot, okay, well, yeah, like I was saying, only aggro a few things at a time. So, we've already lost our chest and gloves, off to a great start. But on the plus side, we had already dealt with a lot of the bats. As I made my way to the bottom, I realized that this cave was still very much full of bad guys. And worse, I was basically out of arrows. So, new plan. Let's see if this bug spray will allow me to sneak in there. Yeah, I don't know, it's looking way too thick in there. I'm not trying to sneak through all of those guys. I began heading back out when I formulated a new plan of attack. I began jumping my way down some mushrooms and cliff faces directly above the artifact. If we can just like get down there, grab it, and then just straight book it out for where we came up, I think we can do this. All right. Can we make this jump to that cliff over there? Uh, nope, nope. Slippery, slippery. Oh, gosh. All right. Let's take some med brews. We're already slipping and sliding down the cliff. Luckily, we've got pretty good health at this point, so we should be fine. All right. We just inch down here over these crystals. Uh, uh, this is weird. Oh, gosh. We just went right through it. All right. Grab the artifact. Grab the artifact. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh, baby. We're running. Okay. Let's go. All right. Slip through. Slip through. Slip through. Did they even chase me? I don't think they actually chased me. Does the bug spray really work that well? Yeah, they didn't even bother to come after me. I thought if you got like too close, the bug spray really didn't make a difference, but I don't know, they really didn't bother with me, so all of that jumping down the cliffside was kind of for nothing. After retrieving the artifact, I had a little bit of time to work on leveling the Rex before I needed to get home, and I figured what better way to start than ridding this island of that level 100 Alpha Rex. It was honestly much more of a fight than I anticipated, and some of my Rex nearly died, mainly because they kind of pinned him into a corner, and instead of surrounding him, were just funneling directly head on. But even with that, they did manage to take it down. So yeah, after returning to base to repair my gear and do imprints, the rest of the day was spent on Carno Island just leveling. This cycle would continue for most of day 91 as well, before collecting our newly level Rex to head home. The following day, our baby Rex had received their last imprint, which meant I could begin gearing up for one of the caves I knew would take longer. 
it's time for the hard snow cave boys and girls like i just said this is the hard snow cave it holds the artifact of the strong and is located roughly right here on your map I entered the cave so heavy I could barely walk because eventually I would be riding a Rex. I just had to reach the first choke point before putting out my cryo fridge. Only problem with that, they apparently removed the choke point in ASA and immediately a dire wolf sniffed me out and came charging, which left me no choice but to stand my ground. Luckily, only one wolf saw me. If those polar bears had came to, I would for sure be dead right now. So after waiting the mandatory 5 minutes, we got our wrecks out and began chomping away at this cave's inhabitants. My main concern will be these Perlovia who are just waiting to jump out and paralyze me. Of course, the one thing I forgot to bring was grenades for shaking them out of their holes. Luckily, these ones seem a little bit shy. This fellow though, not so much, but his aim was a little off. Onward, oh shoot, no, 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 one of them got us, oh, got us. oh knocked us off, okay. Oh, we're in the water, we're in the water. Help me, Rex! Oh, it's just drowning me! It's just holding me into the water, drowning me! Do something! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, wow. That was bad. That was so bad. Eventually, I reached a spot that my Rex was too thick to fit through, so it was time to wait another five minutes for our cryo fridge. Only problem is, I left it back at the start and cryoed my Rex before really thinking about it. And apparently, I missed a few friends along the way. This would eat up a considerable amount of time. Of course, even once we got back, it wasn't exactly smooth sailing getting past this choke point. Holy crap, run, run. Dude, I feel like the scene from the first Star Wars movie when they're running down the hallway and then all the stormtroopers, they open the door and all the stormtroopers are there. That was insane. I began baiting them out a few at a time to our Rex's waiting jaws, until all that was left was a few polar bears who seemed to be having a terrible time figuring out how to get through this tunnel. And then one smart bear figured it out. Oh shoot, he's through, he's through, oh no, 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 oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, all right, we can't kill him. Run, 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 shoot, okay, we can take him. Oh no, I didn't have ammo, no, I have to reload, no, 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 run, 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 oh my gosh, I feel like Leonardo DiCaprio, oh my gosh, oh. Dude, look at our health. We're so dead. We moved past that choke point only to find another one like 50 feet later, and it was back to just seeing how much our Rex can endure. Getting close to the end, I had to clear some crystal for my Rex, and she returned the favor by clearing out bears for me. A Perlovia once again took me down, this time into a pack of wolves who broke more of my armor before I could clear them with my Rex. But at this point, I've lost so much fur armor, I might freeze to death. Luck was on my side though, as this red drop would have riot gloves that got me back to just being cold. We had arrived to the final choke point, but the battle to get into the artifact room was not easy, and our Rex was getting very low on health. At this point, I could see the artifact, and all that was in my way was a few more Perlovia. I deployed my Rex one last time, and thankfully she was able to deflect the Perlovia attacks, and there it was, the artifact that is strong. We earned this one. We finally made it back to base towards the night of day 95, and began prepping for our final cave before heading out to our launch point. This is of course the harder of the underwater caves known as the Caverns of Lost Hope, which contains the artifact of the cunning and is located roughly right here on your map. Now I saved this cave for the end because I already know, like the snow cave, it's no joke. I was hopeful though that four high level sharks could maybe power through. But after one quick fight with eels at the entrance, I had began to really doubt that was gonna be a thing as some of the sharks were already looking roughed up. So it was time for a new plan. I put my sharks on passive and we headed for the top of the waters. My hopes was that I could just blitz past anything at least until we reach the tunnel where the artifact is. As long as we don't get stunned, we should be fine. And sure enough, this was the only way we were getting there as inside the cave sat a Mosasaurus. I headed straight for the back corner with the Moza chasing behind and immediately ducked down into the hole. One shark, two shark, three sharks. All right, everyone made it. To my surprise, the first part of the tunnel was actually cleared out with the exception of one eel. But in the artifact room were more eels, piranha, anglers, and mags waiting. We dealt with them when I noticed that three dunkles sitting just below the artifact, and these were some beasts. I honestly didn't think that I could take these, so I brought my other three mags back to the tunnel and prepared them to make the ultimate sacrifice. I would draw the dunks out to fight them while I grabbed the artifact, and then I would simply make a run for it. However, as I did this, only one dunk managed to follow me, and I saw a chance to do this without losing any of my mags. We jumped all over the lone dunk and took him down before his friends could provide much help. 
then it was a fight to the death with the remaining two. And thankfully, we took them out with no megs lost. From there, it was just a matter of grabbing the artifact and slipping back out around the Mosa. So with our last cave done, I spent the rest of the day crafting up all of our saddles for the boss fights, and then it was time to name our Rex army. I again asked you all for name suggestions before putting it to a spin wheel, and these are the names that won. I also have some spare Rex and of course our aloes that hopefully we will use as extras for the tech cave, so I used your names on them as well. But before heading out, I realized I had never named our support teams, so this is Bert and Ernie. So with that, I had all the teams I would need in cryos, gear all loaded up, meat for the day at on, it was time to go do our first boss battle. Our first boss of this 100 days, of course, is the Broodmother. Normally we would use Megatherium for this, but honestly, these wrecks should get the job done just fine. Alright, here we go. Get back on our UD. Where's it? There we go. Alright. All right, everybody, attack! Go attack her! Oh my gosh, I can't do it. I can't see her through all the racks. Oh my gosh, wrong button. All right, we're already, we're already messing up. Jesus, all right. Let's start buffing them at least. Oh, they're not on neutral. Crap, all right, hold on. <laughs> let's put them on neutral. Uh, hey, this is not an indicator how bad this is gonna go, guys. We're gonna get this done. All right, there they go, there they go. All right, sweet. Go get them, boys and girls. Take that big old spider down. Squash that bug. Keep buffing them up, keep buffing them up till the circle's full. Looks like we have a few of them over there fighting spiders because they're on neutral. We need to get them attacking her. Dude, I can't hit it. I cannot hit the indicator. Oh my gosh. There we go. Holy crap. All right. Everybody's in there fighting her. Mow this bug down. We got her pretty low. She's getting there. We're about to do it. Easy peasy. Just like that. Gamma Brood dunked on it. Easy enough. What is this? What the heck? What the heck? Well, there's the uh, explorer note, whatever. Dossier. What the heck is this? Oh, nice. It puts the trophy and the element in a little uh, chest for you or supply drop for you instead of it being in one of them. All right, we'll give them some levels. That's a big old brood body right there. Sweet. That was uh, that was good enough, you know, easy enough. Nothing nothing too harsh. I don't know if any of my wrecks really took a lot of damage. All of these guys back here are like perfectly fine. Um, did any of you guys who got the levels? Who got the kill? Obviously, probably one of them up here. Okay, that one took a little bit of damage and a little bit of levels. Probably killed some spiders. They had on still doing work. I don't know. I don't know who got the kill. Oh, wow, that one's really beat up. Oh, gosh. All right. <laughs> Next day, and we had swapped out our flak and riot armor for fur, and we're headed north to take on the big old monkey boss. A few of my wrecks did take considerable damage from the brood, so I had to swap them out for the reserves I had waiting. This battle should be pretty easy, to be honest. The Megapithecus is basically a glass cannon, and our wrecks should make short work of it. But either way, we're about to find out. All right, time for boss number two. Get back on the UD. We're gonna pull them all over into the back corner, of course, before we go and bait them down. Can we get around over here? Nope, that is blocked off. Oh my gosh. Probably should have positioned our UD on the other side of the teleporter. All right, here we go. Just have them all follow me over here. Seems like there's a little less space over here. I feel like it used to be bigger. I don't know. We'll just bring them all over here, get them all tucked away in this corner, and then we'll go get them. Let's put them on passive. So they don't like, I don't know. Do some crazy stuff. All right, get turned around here. Oh my gosh, let me through. 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 Oh shoot, he's right there. What the? That's not supposed to happen. He's supposed to wait up there. We're supposed to be able to go get him. I did not. It did not take that long. He should have stayed up there. All right, well let's start buffing him up. My gosh, man, the battle's coming to us. I feel like the area is a little more compact. Like, there's not as enough. Okay, here we go. Rock throw. Ooh, that hurt. That hurt. All right, boys. Girls. Hey, everybody. Get in there. Oh, my gosh. This did not. I wonder if. Did I really take too long, or did he just come down? Like, he just said, screw it, and got down here. All right, everybody's getting in on him. 
This should be pretty quick. I mean, it's the Megapithecus. They should really just kind of work right through him. Oh my gosh, they're just mowing him down. And there we go. We knew this one was going to be easy, right? Like, this is definitely... This is the one the Rex are meant for. So, the next one... The next one's the one that might not be so easy. <laughs> and on day 99, it was time to take on the dragon. Now, I'm not going to lie. At this point, I really did not feel like this was going to go well. Normally, I would do this fight with Therese. But honestly, I just never found any good level ones. This is concerning because the dragon deals bonus damage to carnivores. But I did come up with a plan. Basically, the last thing I want is for my Rex to just funnel in front of the dragon and all get hit with its fire breath attack at the same time. So I split them into two groups with the hopes that having them approach from two different angles would help them better surround the dragon. That's the plan. Let's see how it goes. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Let's get on the UD and draw our first group out of here. We're going to take one group over to, I guess, the left, and then we'll keep our other group, like, over here. And we'll just we'll just try to get him in on him. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to go. This is this is the plan. I just don't think we could do this. Like, if we go head on at this guy, it's going to wipe the floor with us. Like, it's just going to kill us. We have to try something. All right, yep, first group is following me. Come over here. Get your little booties over here. We'll separate you. That way, yeah, like I said, that way we're not just getting all jumped on at the same time. All right, that's good. We got another group over there. All right, we'll have everybody now. Oh, he's coming to us. We don't even have to shoot him down. Dude, what's going on with Ark's mechanics now? All right, he's landing right in the middle of us. This is perfect. All right, everybody attack. Everybody attack. Are they attacking? Yes, yes. Oh, they're going to split. They're going to split. It's working perfectly. Yes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to get like behind him. I feel like I need to be able to like draw his aggro every once in a while. Can I hit him through this rock? Am I safe? Oh, I can't hit him. Okay, I need to start buffing. <laughs> I'm wasting my buffing. Oh, I'm stuck on a rock. Okay, I'm not even getting anybody with the buffs. All right. Let's try to get over here. We need to draw him over to this group. Hey, focus. Yes! Yes, it's working! It's working so well! This is actually crazy. We drew him away from the first group onto the second group. All right, we'll buff this group. We're not going to be able to buff everybody just because of how we have them split, but it is what it is. All right. Okay, he hit this group with the fire. Let's try to draw him back over to this group. Yes, it's working! Oh my gosh! We're actually drawing him, like, between the two groups. So far, so good. Alright. Come back over here, maybe? No, he's hitting... He kind of hit the middle group, though. He didn't hit everybody, I don't think. Oh, it's already down to, like, almost half health. Alright, we're actually doing this thing. I thought this was going to go much worse than this. I thought we were going to get just killed, like... Very quickly, we would be losing Rex before he even flies away. Oh, we got hit by the fire. Ooh, that, that burns. That burns. That's not feeling too good. Come on, guys. Come on. Half oh, 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 we just lost two Rex. There we go. That's that's what I was afraid of. We're losing Rex now, which means the rest of them are probably also not far behind. This might not end well. All right, draw them all back over here. Ooh. Ooh, nice. The rock defended it. <laughs> the rock blocked the fireball for us. He's going to start sending his Tyranodons and Dimorphodons down here soon. All right. He's coming down from this way. We're, we're just going to attack. Oh, he's going to get us all head. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to have happen. Oh, no, they're just fighting him head. Oh, there goes a Rex. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. They're fighting him head on. He's hitting all of them. He's killing them. Is this it? Is this the end of us? Dude, I need him. I need to aggro him. I need to aggro him. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Hit us with fire. Oh, we did it. We're going to lose our UD, but that's okay. That's Dude, that might have just saved our Rex. That might have honestly just saved all of our Rex from dying. That would have been another 10% of their health just gone. 10%, right? Or is it 20? I forget, can't even remember. I'm just flustered right now. All right, let's get on a Rex. Okay. Oh, my gosh. He's so close. But we're losing Rex. We're losing him constantly. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. We can do this. We can do this. Come on. Come on. Oh, that one's down. Oh, it's tail. Look at his tail. 
That's it. Pull the shotty. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Yes. We did it. Oh, my gosh. The plan actually worked. The plan actually worked. There's no way we would have killed that head on. Like, if they didn't get split up, honestly, if they weren't split and if I didn't aggro the fire, like, I took two fire breaths straight to the UD. If I didn't do that, I think he would have, I think he would have killed him. Especially that last fire breath that killed our UD. If that didn't happen, if he got those on the Rex, we lose. Look at these guys. They're beat up. We lose without that happening. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Well, we are, we are short on Rex now. <laughs> I am honestly shocked that we survived that, even if we only have a handful of wrecks left, our aloes, and our deodon. I would spend the rest of the night healing up these wrecks in preparation for the next day. Before I could head out for our final battle, I had to pay respects to my fallen tames from this series. Assault, Max, Rexasaur, Rex Offender, Bert, Grimlock, Barney, Chomper, Alaya, Not a Giga, Malice, Tafor, Little Giga, Rexing Ralph, and Yor. May you all rest in peace. I also just realized as I was doing the editing that I completely forgot about the Megatherium that got arced. I also took a minute to place down our flags we got from defeating the other bosses, and then it was time for us to head to the volcano. We were about to begin our second to last test here on the island. I've got Gilly armor for dealing with the heat, fur for once it becomes cold, a few extra canteens, soups, and hopefully enough ammunition. Obviously the first challenge of the tech cave is just getting your army through this tiny little door. Last time I played the island, this resulted in a disaster where a large number of our teams got left outside. So this time, I elected to do this in small groups. Getting them all through took long enough, but then I had to actually get them sorted into a line to follow me through the cave. And well, by the time we had that done, it was technically day 101. So congrats folks, you get a bonus day in this video again. I began pushing my way down through the cave, doing my best to make any of the bad guys come to me. Honestly, the battles were not a concern of mine. It was mainly that my Rex would randomly jump off into the lava. Because we were only doing this on Gamma, there shouldn't be any Gigas to deal with, which means honestly our biggest threat is the UD pushback potentially knocking us into the lava. Honestly, this attempt actually went super smooth. I was very careful with going around bends, regularly getting off to reposition the team, and before long we had reached the bottom of the cave. Of course, once I passed through the barrier, I switched my fur armor, and before long we were at the teleporter to head to the Hall of History. Now, I'm not much of a history buff though, so I headed straight past all of this for our final fight with the Overseer. All right, here we go. He's about to start doing his like transformative whatever thing that it does. That thing right there. It's about to start doing that. It's about to start becoming the Overseer. And we'll be able to sick our tames on it here in a second. Will we whistle onto it yet? Attack this target. Nope, nobody's going. All right, attack this target. There we go. All right, get them boys and girls. They won't be able to do anything with the shield up, but at least they'll start like chomping at it. So when the shield drops, they should start attacking. And then I'm just gonna, since we're gonna have a UD, I'm just gonna run like crowd control with this Rex and try to keep these defense units off of them while they attack the Overseer. Why are you peeling off? No, 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 attack the Overseer. I told you to attack this target. Is that not how that works? Am I an idiot? I thought attack this target meant you would stick on the target that I tell you to attack, not you attack everything and anything you want. Well, maybe I'm an idiot, I don't know. All right, come on guys. Let's do some damage to this thing. Everybody's getting on it. Come on team, everybody up here. I'll hold these guys off, please. Do not turn around. Go fight the Overseer. I'll hold these off of you. All right, they're getting in there. They're doing some damage. Thank goodness, they're actually attacking it. And it's off, just like that. Oh, oh, there we go. It's doing his first transformation. It's gonna be the Broodmother. It's the Broodmother? Oh no, it's the monkey. Monkey coming down. Go get it, guys. Go get the monkey. I can't get it. Go get the monkey. There we go. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of damage. That has That's the aloes, right? Yeah, that's got to be the aloes. Dude, that hit us hard. Holy crap. Get in there, gang. Come on. Take that monkey down. Take the monkey down. Spank the monkey. All 
Our tames are not looking good. They're already getting bloodied up. This is a disaster. This is the... Oh, there goes one of our aloes. Who's that? Otters are awesome. I'm sorry, Krabby. It didn't survive. It was actually the first one to die in the Overseer. All right. First boss transformation down, and we are already hurting. This is obviously... Look, we came to our own funeral, right? Like, we knew we weren't getting through this. Once it, go, once it becomes the dragon, we're done. But you know what? We're going to keep fighting. Wait, guys. Wait for me. Don't leave me behind. I don't want to die. We just cannot keep up with it. Oh, there we go. Oh, get it, guys. Come on. No, get it. Oh, shoot. Oh, crap. All right. Okay. Okay. We're off. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Rex, Rex, Rex. Don't run away. All right. <laughs> that could have ended terribly right there. Holy crap. We just can't keep... Ooh. Okay. We just cannot keep up with it. Like, it's just too fast. The Rex are just... They're not it, man. They're not the answer. All right. Get it, guys. Oh, gosh. There goes another Rex. Oh, gosh. Don't hit me. Oh, how did that one not hit me? We're losing Rex. All right, come on, drop that shield. Oh, crap. All right, it's transforming. Here we go, second transformation. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Oh, shoot. All right, well, that, there's that fire. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That fire breath right there that he just showed us that it's over. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you guys enjoyed. No, no, I'm kidding. Let's get this final battle. Let's do it. We're gonna fight to the end. He's coming straight for me, and none of my other guys are coming. There they go. All right, get in there, guys. You know what? Let's just, it's gonna end. Like, it's over. Let's just get in there. Take this dragon down as much as we possibly can with its glowing green eyes. Yeah, face them. Don't even. Okay, well, kill. I didn't want you to kill them. Just wanted you to face them. Oh my gosh, dude! Everything is going down. Once again, the overseer is just too much for us. Come on, just get it as far. Just let's just take it as far as we can. It's just pushing us back into the corner. There's the fire. Oh my gosh, man. It's just pushing us back into this corner. Well, our Rex is actually holding out pretty well. This this one is actually taking some take damage. It's actually tanking. There's I mean, there's just no way we could ever kill the dragon with Rex. Like we had to have we had to have fairies for this, and we just didn't, so. It is what it is. We're gonna fight till the final breath leaves our body. Our Rex is about to go down. Our Rex is any minute now any shot now is its last shot oh there goes the Rex all right can we run oh they're holding us in oh there we go well that obviously did not end how we wanted it to but in the end I am still proud of how far we made it obviously there are a lot of things looking back that I would have done differently I do feel like I wasted a lot of time at some points and I wish I'd been able to get more building done but I still had fun playing through this even with all of the bugs and crashes. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It took a ton of work to put this together, so if you did, please do me a favor and hit that like button, share it around, and if you're not already, subscribe for more Ark Survival Ascended content. Until next time, keep it crispy.